Cheryl Erickson and I am the Indigenous Focused ECE instructor with Louis Riel Vocational College. Today in Child and Family Diversity, we will be looking at Chapter 6, which is Societal Influences on Children and Their Families. But before we get started, I just want to remind you to read Chapter 6 as this video is not a replacement for your daily chapter readings. So when we look at societal influences uh, on children and their families, um, we need to realize that um, family is, is, is key, it, it's very important, and it is really the first socialization agent uh, that children have. And so uh, family is the microsystem uh, as the child becomes, uh, as the child learns and grows and develops um, and comes with age, they start to interact a little bit more outside the family. Uh, and then those different types of social agents uh, will come into play. So community, schools, um, and things like that. And so um, when I say family is the microsystem, so that microsystem is language, so the, the language that the family may speak, uh, what your social class is, um, your culture, your ethnic uh, background, is, is a key contributor and um, is um, a huge uh, social component as well to your family. Uh, we also look at the hard versus soft individualism. And what I mean by that is um, your kind of your parenting styles and how you raise your children. Some are uh, enforced a little more rules um, and uh, want children uh, to learn. They want them to be strong and, and be independent. Uh, as verse, versus soft is um, we don't want, or parents who, who choose to soft uh, parent uh, want to do things um, easier uh, for the children. And so uh, setting uh, some limits, uh, not learning the hard ways, so to speak, is maybe another terminology uh, for that. So those are, you know, some considerations to take that, that take place uh, as we uh, get to know the families. And as children are coming into daycare, uh, especially with those different types of parenting styles, uh, we need to really get to know um, the children and their families in order to care for them. The other uh, major socialization agents uh, for children uh, are family, school, peer group, and media. And so when I say that family is the first uh, socialization agent, uh, all children basically know um, prior to starting school is really uh, about their families and, and that microsystem. As they get older, they start to explore uh, and uh, participate in more uh, kind of uh, outside of the family uh, scenarios. And so that might be school, uh, developing friends. Uh, when you make friends, uh, they could be from different cultures, from different socioeconomical levels. They have different um, beliefs. They might do, live in different neighborhoods. So there's, there's uh, again, uh, different factors that might come into play regarding that. And also to recognize media and technology play uh, a key factor in, um, in socialization. However, it's really only one-sided. Um, you're not really, you know, you're not really socializing, you're, you're watching and you're learning something, but there really isn't a uh, um, communication uh, and socializing back uh, within those types of systems. So when we look at socializing and the family, um, there's a lot of different influences that come into play and that really need to be recognized and considered when you, you think about planning uh, an early learning environment for children. And so, you know, families really have um, some subcultures within them. And so that might not just be, um, that just is not necessarily your culture. Um, sometimes that can be um, hobbies and values. Um, 
so consider, you know, a family that's very sports minded and, you know, on weekends get together and play uh, a game of baseball versus a family whose parents are workaholics. Um, and so children don't have the opportunity to do that. So there's a, a really uh, different, a lot of differences between uh, two children that are raised in, in those different situations, right? They're with a family whose parents aren't workaholics. There's probably more of a, a, a hard individualism um, standard there where work, 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 work. Uh, comes into play uh, and work is very important and you need to get a really good education to get a good job to uh, to follow that uh, same kind of pattern. So there are considerations uh, regarding that and when you think about families and how you um, interact with them in, in your environment. Also consider um, you know your communication uh, styles with a family of uh, that may be workaholics versus uh, a family who you know uh, holds jobs but also value um, the need to uh, do organized family um, fun and functions as well so there can be a, a lot of differences within family systems uh, that come into play when you're caring for children and it's it's, it's interests, um, ethnic uh, backgrounds come into play. So if you have a child from uh, a different ethnic background than all the other children uh, in, in care in your environment, and also consider your staff, how do you make that child uh, feel comfortable coming uh, into your environment? Consider social class too, uh, um, low socioeconomical as well as um, um, affluent uh, families. So lots of different considerations when we're, we're thinking about um, children that we're, we're caring for. We also have um, some different, um, you know, societal types of issues that uh, we're, we deal with, um, not only personally, but professionally. So classism is still uh, a socialization agent. Uh, for some people, it's hard to see, especially if you're within uh, that system. You might not uh, realize that you're doing that. Um, often, classism is more of an affluent type of issue. So people that are have uh, higher incomes or um, recognized as upper class look down um, to the lower class. Uh, and those lower class become targets uh, for classism. And so that is, you know, something that uh, happens in our, in, in society, as well as racism. And um, those who have experienced racism don't have to read about it to understand it. Uh, racism has many uh, forms to it between stereotyping, discrimination, uh, racist attitudes. Um, it does affect how children socialize just as, as um, classism would affect how children socialize. Classism usually means uh, children will socialize within their class. Um, there isn't always, uh, you know, a, a, a mix. Um, however, um, you know, racism, uh, those barricades of stereotypes and discrimination, people may look at you uh, differently because of your race, your color, uh, and because of that, um, you are, uh, children aren't necessarily able to effectively socialize. And children don't see that. That doesn't come from a child. That comes from things adults are telling children um, that, that aren't appropriate. So, you know, we as early childhood educators, uh, want to teach children not to, to teach children anti-bias curriculum and, you know, uh, to view the world, uh, in a positive light and people, uh, because we learn so much, uh, from interacting with the uniqueness is uh, the uniqueness of each individual as well as as the things we learn from their cultures. So we, when we look at schools as socialization uh, agents, uh, we we have to take into factor um, 
uh, our program and, and the type of program we're delivering. And so I'm going to eliminate school and, and put daycare there because uh, uh, that's appropriate to us in, in our education today. When we establish our daycare centers, we dis establish it with a set curriculum, um, policies and procedures. And we do that based on what we know and often that's within the cultures uh, that are ours. How do we uh, adapt that to uh, reflect the culture within the community? We don't want to enroll children in our program or bring children in from different um, cultures, ethnic backgrounds, um, and expect them to understand uh, and do well in an environment that uh, they can't recognize anything uh, from, their, from their home or from their own culture. So we have to be adaptive and, and start to include um, a more multicultural, uh, diverse program uh, to be successful and meet the needs of, of all families. And so we know that family is the first socialization agent. Uh, we want children to come into our programs. We want them to learn and grow and thrive. And so connecting with uh, community organizations and families within the community can teach us how to adapt our program, our environment, and our curriculum to successfully meet the needs of, of the, the children that we care for. So we're going to look at things like our, I had said before, our anti-bias uh, curriculum, uh, you know, where we are going to be accepting of everybody. Um, and uh, to, to make some positive steps in order to uh, be inclusive uh, to everybody that uh, wants care within our facility. We want to ensure that, uh, again, it's a, a positive experience, that we are uh, relying on the re available resources in our community. Because we are such a uh, diverse culture and uh, we've had so many uh, new uh, newcomers uh, coming to Canada and in particularly Manitoba, we have a lot of different resource centers that we can approach to help teach us uh, about culture, uh, about, about uh, individual practices. And again, you know, to take advantage of that is going to be key. Uh, in helping uh, children be comfortable within that environment. And it could be the colors you choose within the environment. It could be pictures, books, art, um, even learning uh, some specific language, just welcoming, good morning, hello, uh, goodbye, things like that. There is, uh, you know, there is uh, availability within our community to, to recognize all that. When we look at, at schools, there has been um, an anti-bias approach uh, to the curriculum uh, that was a, a funded endeavor uh, to ensure that, um, you know, that uh, schools were meeting the, new, the, the differences of the new, unique uh, families and cultures that were coming into play and that uh, they were recognizing uh, the importance of that. Uh, we do, when I look at the, the standards here on the slide, uh, a lot of this is also American. In Manitoba, we have a set curriculum um, and we have schools within uh, different areas of Winnipeg and Manitoba that really do often uh, incorporate diversity. Uh, to the uniqueness within that community. So we have schools in Winnipeg that have um, Aboriginal teachings. We have schools in Winnipeg that offer Ukrainian language. We have schools in, in, in Winnipeg that uh, teach different uh, languages, like according to the Filipino um, culture. So there is more of that recognized here in, I think, in, in Manitoba and in Canada. We have French speaking schools, French language schools. And so looking at the uniqueness of your family within your culture, you can choose uh, where to live and where you want to pursue the education. Uh, for your child that is more culturally relevant. So uh, I'm just going to bypass the 
uh, uh, the slide of the uh, inequity in schools because it's more American uh, based, I believe, than it is uh, Winnipeg and, and, and Manitoba. Uh, a consideration as well uh, regarding socializing uh, is peers. And the, this is a, a, a big step as well uh, as children start to become uh, more social beings. And in the preschool years, the three and four year olds really uh, come into themselves uh, socializing. And children socialize uh, with each other when they find some more uh, common interests. And that does tend to change as uh, children uh, become older. Their peers may change, their interests may change. And so there is often peer pressure um, that takes place as adults. We need to guide the children. Uh, they have a good sense of what's right and wrong and really uh, incorporating um, those tactics of, of teaching them uh, the importance of making good decisions and why that is important so that peer pressure isn't a negative uh, thing uh, but more of a positive thing. Uh, there's perceptions and attitudes and behaviors when it comes to uh, socializing your peers and with your peers. And again, you know, as ECEs, we are going to teach those uh, strategies of, of appropriate behaviors, um, uh, consequences, rewards, uh, punishments, uh, as well uh, where it is where is it is appropriate. Um, we look at different influences regarding peers, uh, who makes up the peer group. And again, in most situations, this could be, uh, you know, peer groups can change uh, depending on uh, where you're socializing. Uh, you can have friends in school, you can have friends in daycare that may be different, you could have friends within your cultural community. So that is all, um, you know, uh, different depending on uh, where you live. Your peer group could be in your community. Uh, peers are affected by gender in the younger ages, uh, preschool and, and early elementary. Boys and girls, um, play, interact together really well, but it changes as they get a little bit older and then it kind of, uh, girls tend to interact and socialize uh, with the same gender as well as boys uh, tend to do that as well. Um, the thing about peers is uh, the choices sometimes can be negative uh, and often that is because um, children, teenagers want to belong. Nobody wants to be the odd man out uh, again and um, sometimes the wrong choices are made when interacting with peers because you don't want to be left out and you want to be uh, a part of that peer group or a part of that group and again that's where we really need to guide uh, children appropriately uh, and help them make those decisions, uh, the right decisions. Just because uh, the peer group is doing it doesn't always make it uh, a right decision and sometimes those aren't the right individuals to be hanging out with. So choices have to be made uh, regarding that as well. And that's kind of the give and take. Um, Within that, we talked about the acceptance and the rejection, and, and that's, that's always really hard uh, for children, uh, especially uh, in the rejection side. Feelings get hurt. It hurts the self-esteem. Um, and often peers aren't bound by adult norms, uh, and that's where problems do arise. Uh, adults, you know, generally uh, make the rules, and enforce the rules and there can be that um, you know uh, as children get older uh, that defiance of the rules but again knowing uh, that there are consequences for that um, hopefully will uh, impact those peers in making those right choices or those children in making the right choices. How does media technology add uh, impact that socialized age, the socializing agent, and 
Media and technology is a very uh, important part of learning and, and growing. Um, technology has grown by leaps and bounds and we live in a screen society where um, we're often wanting children to uh, learn educational games via the iPad or the computer. Uh, there's a lot of in, uh, a lot of television programs that are teaching children, like for example, Sesame Street. Their children are learning colors and numbers. Um, and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of positive uh, gains within that. Uh, a lot of repetition, and children do learn by repetition. And there there are a lot of uh, really good programs uh, out there on TV or or via. Um, computer time pro or computer programs that teach children different lessons and concepts. And so having said that, the opposite is, is even though a child is singing and it appears that maybe they're socializing with the children on the TV, it really isn't a socialization uh, type of game. They're just repeating, it's rote, uh, they're singing along, participating more so than it being interactive. And so where children are going to learn and grow is through socialization and through interacting, uh, physically interacting with other children, with their peers. And so uh, it is almost misleading, I think, when uh, we feel that that is teaching them uh, because more is going to be learned and gained through actual uh, socialization uh, than, than anything in that regard. So that does conclude um, chapter six, uh, social influences on children and their families. Please do uh, see your instructor if you have any questions regarding this chapter and also check in to make sure you haven't missed any handouts or assignments pertaining to chapter six. Thank you.